Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. This is my, my uh, website. Uh, if you just Google paulbeckwith.net, then you can get my website. And there was just a post today on uh, tweets of the week um, over the last week. I haven't um, uploaded a YouTube video for about a week. Usually I do one every couple days or you know two or three a week. And if it's about a week, uh, is about as far as I go in between <coughs> videos, you know, I start getting people saying, Paul, are you sick? Are you okay? Um, my voice may be a little bit off because of my co uh, cold I have, but uh, let's talk about some of the things that um, have been going on over the week. Um, this is the key thing, and this is the focus of my next uh, number of videos. I'll have different parts. So... Flying insect numbers have dropped 76% in 27 years. And industrial fishing, farming, and climate change are wrecking ecosystems. So the point of the Guardian article by Georges Monvio is that it's mostly pesticides and changes in the habitat that have been causing these massive drops. Now these things are very, very significant. And, uh, you know, this is like a moment where we need this guy here. Like, this is really, really serious uh, stuff. Uh, this drop, this massive drop in biodiversity. I also talked about global temperatures and there's tweets on abrupt climate change. No, we're not in a, in a new normal. When you hear somebody saying we were in a new normal with these extreme weather events, forget that. Um, climate change is accelerating very quickly. Extreme weather events are ramping up. There's nothing, we're not at a steady state. A new normal would imply that we've reached a steady state type of situation or something where, you know, we can expect certain things, but we're, we're ramping up. There's lots of unexpected things happening. Um, and there's some article, some things on sea level rise, which sort of back a new study on coral evidence kind of backs up that, you know, we can get massive sea level rise in short periods of time. You know, we've seen um, 50 millimeters, which is five centimeters or two inches per year over five decade periods. So 50 years, two and a half meters of sea level rise in these meltwater pulses. Puerto Rico, on, what a disaster. 450 people dead in, in some recent um, uh, news reports. You know, I would expect thousands upon thousands. You know, 3.6 million people in this place. You know, most people don't have power, don't have access to fresh water, etc. So the death rate, the deaths are much higher. The question is, why is it being kept from the public? Why is it being hidden? Why, you know, what's going on here? And stock markets are setting new highs. You know, the Dow is doubled in five years. It, it reached 23,000 recently. It's up 50% in two years. It ignores the reality of abrupt climate change. Shows how disconnected our world is. The financial markets um, are going up and up and up as the ecosystems are failing more and more and more. This is obviously gonna end badly. Um, financial systems and global markets are completely and irrationally separated from the reality of our collapsing planetary ecosystems. And you can, you can go on to my blog, um, blog and read some other things, but let's focus on these flying insect numbers, okay? Um, so let's have a look at, uh, let's get into the nitty gritty of that. I always like to recommend books. I read copious books. Usually if I take a week off or something, you know, in this particular case, I went to an island, onto a cabin on an island myself, and I had crowbars and I had big, huge axes and I was ripping, uh, uh, a friend of mine came up with me a few weeks ago and we ripped down a, a couple decks you know, spent all day, uh, all weekend ripping down a couple decks and just pulling them aside while new decks were being built. And um, so pulling out, I try to salvage as much wood as possible for projects. And, uh, you know, it's a lot more work to pull out all the nails from, from a deck that was built 30, you know, 35, 40 years ago. Uh, large parts of it were rotten, but there's still lots of good wood. So that's what I've been doing. You know, one of the great ways for stress relief is to you know, manual labor and things like that. And I love to read. So just to give you an update, um, this book, What the Luck, 
by Gary Smith, its surprising role of chance in our everyday lives. Excellent book. Explains regression to the mean very well. It, it, it explains why, you know, with all the major superstorms this year and hurricanes, you know, you can't expect that next year is going to be just the same thing. Right after Katrina in 2005 and all those massive storms where they ran out of letters in the alphabet, you know, um, investment people were, were putting big, big bucks on saying, you know, uh, 2006 was going to be far worse. And it was it was a dud. Right. There was no almost no storms. Conditions were different. So regression to the mean is very important. You know, people make this mistake all of the time. Um, I also teach, uh, uh, I've taught oceanography, and there's a new edition, the eighth edition. This oceanography book by Tom Garrison uh, covers a whole gamut of things in the ocean. And, you know, people overlook the ocean in terms of, you know, using it in, in terms of um, the, the, what it does, how vital it is to our planet. Um, so anyway, let's get back to the insects. I'll just hit the lights. Okay, so, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, so 76% drop in flying insect numbers in 27 years. Where does that come from? Well, first of all, we've got the concept of biomass. Okay, it's a mass of living biological organisms in a given area or ecosystem. So we can talk about the biomass on the entire planet. You can talk about species biomass which is a mass of one or more species, community biomass, a particular community in a particular region, which is all the species in a community. Um, it can include microorganisms, plants and animals. You know, it could be an average mass per unit area or a total mass in a given area. Okay, so, um, so it depends, you know, and there's other factors, for example, you know, in fish, you can have the actual weight but then, you know, their body's composed of a lot of water inside the fish. So do you include that in the biomass and things like that? Or you just do include the biological tissues? Um, okay, so apart from bacteria, total live biomass on Earth, about 560 billion tons. That's gigatons. Primary production, that's plants, produce about 100 billion tons of carbon per year. Okay, um... The total live biomass, now this is surprising to a lot of people, the biomass of bacteria may be as much as that of plants and animals, or it may be less. So, you know, there's a lot we don't know about that, but, um, and you can get numbers for global biodiversity, for the total mass of the biosphere, and then you talk about, you need to talk about ecological pyramids, where you have primary producers, which are the autotrophs, the plants, and then primary consumers, the animals that eat the plants, animals that eat the animals, and the up, as you go up the trophic levels, you get fewer and fewer numbers. So you get a lot of these, and less of those, and less of those, and less of those, and energy is lost. Like one of these will eat 10 times the quantity of these, and 10% and goes into the biomass, and the other 90% goes, um, goes into the energy. You get an energy in, in, in each case. So. Um, at the very top, you have these apex predators. Okay, so the biomass generally decreases at each higher trophic level. You get less animals, they're bigger, and their biomass is smaller. So um, as you go up, and you, so for example, in the oceans, you've got phytoplankton, the plants, the zooplankton eat the phytoplankton, things eat the zooplankton, filter feeders, feed through and eat all of the plankton and then you get the predatory fish eating these and so on up the up the food chain okay you can do this for any particular ecosystem um, now bacteria there's about 50 million bacterial cells in a gram of soil and a million in a milliliter of fresh water there's huge numbers so the, when you add these all up, although they're, they're microscopic and you can't see them, the biomass has been calculated to be 350 to 550 billion tons of carbon, which is about 60 to 100% of the carbon in plants. You know, we think most of the biomass is stored in plants because we think of those massive trees, et cetera, you know, the leaves, the branches, et cetera. Uh, but the, the bacterial quantities are, 
are huge. Um, and you can get, this is an interesting um, chart here um, where you have, you know, humans, one species. This was in 2012, 7 billion. Now we're at 7.5 billion. Um, and the mean living mass, <coughs> 50 kilograms, including children, percent biomass. If you dry us out, you know, we're 70% water, 30% um, mass. Okay, number of carbon atoms, etc. Okay, now cattle. Okay, there's 1.3 billion cattle. You know, there's about a six of the number of cattle as there are people but they weigh a lot more. They weigh eight times on average more. So the biomass of these guys is larger than that of humans. Humans estimated 105 million tons, cattle 156 million tons. And then you can go down to look at different types of uh, numbers of species here. Um, and you can go through and it's really interesting stuff. So where we're getting at with this is you know, where and then and then you can see how it's arrayed on the planet and et cetera. Okay. Now, so this is a biomass. So now let's have a look at you know how do we go and count this mass? Um, so this is a really amazing paper from 2010 um, called Massing Life. You can Google it. You should be able to access it. And what we see is that let's go to insects. Okay, we'll go down to insects. Intuition is proven wrong in the case of insects. Collectively, they're the most successful animals, both in terms of biomass and diversity. This is great. Insects have done wonderful on our planet. What's not so great, in fact, that makes that loss of 76% of insect biomass um, in the last 27 years from that study in Germany, of which I'll talk about all the detail, that's, that makes it even worse and more significant. Here we've got the most successful animals on the planet in terms of biomass and diversity, the insects, and we've killed off uh, three quarters of them in 27 years. I mean, what other species could possibly do this? Good going, humans. Uh, you're totally taking out your, <coughs> your, uh, your, your biological ecosystems, your food chains. So it's going to end badly, you know, if you continue doing this, obviously. We don't have many left. All that research to do better pesticides, to find better ways to kill insects, and to, you know, has worked so well. There's all these companies, all these chemicals, and we're basically annihilating, we've annihilated um, the uh, insects. And so in the insect class, beetles are the biggest and most successful order. 350,000 known species of beetles, including the largest and smallest insects. They colonize almost all habitat. But in terms of biomass, they're, they only make up 2% of all insect species in terms of biomass, the social insects, right? They're, they're, they're like uh, uh, termites, bees, wasps, and ants. They've evolved the ability to live in colonies, to work together. They can have much greater population densities than beetles. Many clones of individual organisms, genetically identical organisms, interestingly, um, as E.O. Wilson pointed out, that's just 2% of all animal species, but it's more than half of the total insect biomass. So when we've taken out 75% of the biomass, most of them are, um, you know, these, these social uh, insects. So this is, this is hugely significant, okay? Um, you can go on here, you know, and get, there's lots of interesting things on how these are calculating you know, trees should be photosynthesizing 12% faster, given a 70 ppm increase in atmospheric carbon dioxide. Um, of course, water is stressing and keeping that number not as high. There's lots of fascinating things in this paper. The key point is, this is a paper that I'm discussing in great detail. Insect, insectageddon, farming is more catastrophic than climate break breakdown, according to George Mombio. Um, so this is the article in The Guardian, which just came out, that I will be discussing in great detail, um, you know, in this series of videos. So this was part one of the video. I'm not sure how many parts at this stage there'll be. Um, you know, please have a look at my website and YouTube channel. Thank you.